Hello and welcome to the RPG Blender, where we give lesser played games and forgotten settings the roll the dice they deserve. I'm your host, Game Master George, and today we'll be getting totally metal. Yeah, that was awful. As you already know, for this next tutorial series, we'll be learning about the Doom Metal RPG Merk Borg. Look, I swear I'm doing my best to pronounce it. One helpful Facebooker even sent me a correct pronunciation, but I'm an idiot. This game is a dark experience with grotesque imagery, so if you find themes of intense violence, nihilism, or inevitable loss upsetting, this is probably not the game for you. However, if you enjoy that so dark it's almost funny style, then you should consider giving it a try. Since this book is fairly short, we'll be able to cover a bit more per video than we usually do. So today, we'll be going through character creation and the mechanics of play. No reason to delay further, so let's get started. Character creation is easy here. It's mostly random. There are a few optional steps which we'll cover afterwards, but for the most part, all you need to do is roll some dice. First of all, you are nobody important. In the standard method, you are not a fighter, a wizard, a rogue. You are a nobody who found some gear. So let's see what you've got. You begin with 2d6 times 10 silver, a water skin, and 1d4 days worth of rations. Enjoy it! Next we'll be rolling for your more exotic equipment. Roll a d6 and two d12s, then consult the charts on page 19. The d6 gives you your carrying gear, perhaps a bag, perhaps a donkey, or Nothing. The two D12s give you two items of note that you carry. This could be a lantern, a bomb, four monkeys, or a scroll. And if you roll a scroll, be sure you note that. For your scroll, if you rolled one, roll a D10. Then consult the appropriate chart on page 35, either unclean or sacred, and see what your scroll does. Now we will see what weapon you carry with you. Roll a D10, or a D6 if you got a scroll in the previous step, and consult the, um, interesting charts on pages 20 through 23. These charts tell you what weapon you carry, be it sword, flail, or femur, and how much damage it does. Last for your equipment, we will see if you are lucky enough to have some armor. Roll a d4 or a d2 if you have a scroll, bet you're regretting that roll now, and consult the chart on page 24. The chart tells you what armor you begin with, how much damage it resists, its tier, and any penalties which might be associated with it. And that's it for equipment, so next up we'll be determining your abilities. Each character has four abilities. Agility allows you to do things like swim, defend yourself, or run away when your defense inevitably fails. Presence is both your force of personality and your presence of mind. It governs perception, charming, and the use of powers. Strength is a bit more standard. It is how well you can crush things, lift things, and desperately try to hurt the bad things. Toughness is how well you will stay alive. It is your ability to survive poison, temperature, and the unfortunate experience of falling. Alright, now that you know what the abilities are, let's get them some values. Because we are not using any optional rules yet, you will roll 4d6 twice, dropping the lowest die, then 3d6 twice, unmodified. Total up each of the rolls, then consult the chart on page 26 to determine the bonus it gives. For example, a roll of 13 gives a plus 1, a 9 gives a plus 0, and a 5 gives a minus 2. After this, the actual roll result doesn't matter, only the modifier. Last for the randomness, roll a d8 and add your toughness modifier to get your hit points. And that's it for the standard creation steps, though the game does give one optional one. If you'd like, you can name your character, but as the book says, it won't save you. There we have the main creation completed. There are, however, three optional rules you can choose to include. First up, while the base rules assume you are a nobody who somehow found their way into some halfway acceptable gear, there is an option which allows for a bit more capable of a start. This begins with the choosing of a class. There are six classes to choose from convenient for a d6 roll to decide. Each class provides some alterations to the randomization process. This includes altering the dice you use to determine hit points, or starting weapon, and the way by which you calculate the ability modifiers. So basically, everything that we've already talked about, 
forget the dice and follow the rules outlined for your chosen class. To illustrate, let's complete the steps outlined for one of the classes available from the Morkborg website, the Forlorn Philosopher. For your abilities, you roll 3d6 plus 2 for presence, 3d6 minus 2 for strength, and 3d6 for the remaining classes. Since you're gaining extra bennies for getting a class, no 4d6 drop lowest for you. You get just d6 times 10 silver and begin with only d4 plus toughness hit points. Roll only a d6 for your weapon and a d2 for your armor. You get none of the normal random gear, instead starting with a Tablet of Ochre Obscurity and roll a d6 on your special item chart. Beyond that, there are two charts that you can roll on for some bits of setting appropriate characterization, completing out the class-based character creation. Optional rule 2 gives you, you guessed it, more random tables. Pages 39 through 43 give you random character flaws, trauma, physical ailments, bad habits, or a special event or reason you're hunted. Roll a die specified by the table, or throw a knife at it to build your poor twisted wretch. And before you ask, no, you don't get any special goodies for taking these flaws. Just enjoy the imperfections. A final optional rule is for omens. Omens are the favor of some higher or lower power and allow you to get some help in play. We will cover how they work when we go through the mechanics, but for now, if you are not using character classes, then mark down that you get D2 omens. If you are using classes, then your class will tell you how many omens you get. Our lucky forlorn philosopher gets D4. And that's it for character creation. If you haven't guessed by now, characters in this game are pretty expendable. It's a dark world and a grim fate surely awaits you. So good thing it's easy to make a new character. So easy, in fact, there is a website which can make you a complete randomized character in just a moment. I'll drop a link to it in the description. Now before we close out character creation, let's talk about how your characters improve. There are no experience points. You improve when the GM tells you you do, typically after some grand task is completed. When you do, you test to see if you improve in any way. Roll 6d10. If the roll is greater than your max HP, increase your HP by d6. Then roll a d6 for each of your abilities. If the roll is equal to or higher than your current modifier, increase the modifier by 1 to a maximum of 6. However, if it's lower, you reduce the modifier by 1. That's right, you can get worse on leveling up. If the ability modifier is between minus 3 and 1, you only decrease if you roll a 1, and you cannot go below minus 3. Finally, roll a d6 to see if you find anything cool nearby. A 1 to 3 gives you nothing, but a 4 gives you money. A 5 gives you an unclean scroll, and a 6 gives you a sacred scroll. Alright, with our characters made, let's talk mechanics. Tests in this game are fairly simple, as should be expected. A roll and add system, you roll a d20 and add or subtract the modifier of your relevant ability. If the result meets or beats the difficulty rating of the test, you succeed. Difficulty ratings start at 6 for something trivial, then increasing in steps of 2 up to 18 for something you should almost never succeed at. This means that with a neutral bonus of 0 in your stat, you will have a 75% chance of success at the trivial task and a 15% at the near impossible one. Each plus or minus from your ability modifier adds or subtracts 5% from this chance of success. Now let's talk the meat of most games, combat. As expected, combat begins with an initiative roll. There are two ways that you can handle this. First, the simple way, the GM can simply roll a d6. On a roll of one to three, the enemies go first. Four to six, the players do. Alternatively, you can roll individual initiatives. Each player rolls a d6, adding their agility modifier. Higher rolls go first. This can be used in conjunction with the previous option to determine the order in which the players or monsters act within their group. Or you could use that to have a more traditional initiative structure. To attack, players will determine if they are making a melee or ranged attack. If making a melee attack, they will test strength, and if attacking ranged, they will test presence. In either case, the difficulty rating is 12, 
potentially modified by abilities on either side. Meet or beat the target and you can roll your weapon damage. When defending, the player still controls the dice. They will test agility against a potentially modified difficulty rating of 12. Fail the test and you are struck by the attack. Roll damage for the attacker's weapon and roll any damage reduction you might have then subtract the result from your health. Of course, like many games, Natural 20 and Natural 1 are treated special. In the event of a Natural 20 on an attack, damage is doubled, and the target's armor is reduced by one tier, from D6 to D4 to D2 to Ruined Beyond Repair. If the crit is on the defense roll, the PC instead gets a free attack. The rules don't specify this to be the case, but it does seem that the intention would be that it is a free attack on the one who failed to hit you. If you instead roll a natural one on attack, your weapon is broken or lost. Meanwhile, on the defense roll, this results in double damage and reduction of armor by one tier. Of note, though the armor gets its protection value reduced, it does not reduce the penalties to strength or agility tests. So what happens when you start to take damage? At zero HP, you roll a D4 on the broken table on page 29. You may fall unconscious, lose a limb, be slowly bleeding out, or just be straight dead. If you ever hit the negative of your max HP, you are dead. When combat is concluded, assuming you survive, you may get a chance to rest. If you have time to catch your breath and take a drink, you gain D4 HP. A full night's sleep is much more effective, giving you a whopping D6 HP. Of course, this assumes you have food and drink. Without that, you gain no HP from resting. And after two days, you start losing a D4 HP per day. If you have the unfortunate fate of being infected, you gain nothing from resting and instead lose D6 HP daily. Now with combat being devastating, not all creatures are looking to fight. If the tone of meeting is uncertain, roll 2D6 and consult the table on page 31 to determine the disposition of the creature. It could even decide to be helpful in its own way. Even should they choose to fight, an intelligent creature will likely not choose to fight to the death. If their leader is killed, if half their group is eliminated, or if a solo creature is reduced to one third of an HP, it may break. Roll 2d6 and compare to the creature's morale value. If the roll is greater, it is demoralized and will either try to flee or surrender. Roll a d6 to determine which. Fleeing on a one to three, surrendering on a four to six. During creation, you may have been lucky enough to receive a scroll. These scrolls allow you to utilize powers. Each morning, roll a d4 and add your presence modifier to determine your power uses for the day, chosen from your scrolls. When you choose to use one of your powers, test presence with a dr12. Succeed and you activate the power, then subtract one from your daily uses. If you fail, lose d2 HP and become dizzy for the next hour. While dizzy, you always fail if you try to activate a power, and in the worst way possible. Now, should you crit or fumble, the GM will decide the additional effect. However, there is a hilariously awful arcane catastrophe table on page 44, which could be used. Closing out the mechanics, we have omens. As determined earlier, you have a certain number of omens per day. These omens can be used for one of five different effects. You can deal maximum damage with one attack, reroll a dice roll, yours or somebody else's, reduce damage dealt to you by a source by D6, cancel a crit or fumble, or lower a test's difficulty by four. After you deplete your omens, roll your omen die and you will regain that many at your next six hour rest. And there we have it. If I've done my job right, you should now have a basic understanding of how to create your character and actually play the game. Next time we'll cover the setting and some GM tools you could use to help run this game. If you enjoyed this video, thought it was helpful, maybe give me a like. Or if I'm an idiot who got everything wrong, go ahead and give me that downvote. Other people may not see it, but I do. Oh, I feel them all. But hey, if you want more content, consider subscribing for more tabletop videos.
And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can find affiliate links in the description to pick up this book. Or if you want to help us afford more games to talk about, RPGs get expensive. We also have a coffee, tip jar, or good old Patreon, where the next part of this tutorial will actually be available early. All right, enough of that. If you'd like to check out another game tutorial, you could try one of these here. I'd personally recommend Don't Rest Your Head if Morkborg was up your alley. Anyway, thank you again, and remember, there's gaming outside the Forgotten Realms.